As we explained in the fall of 2020, which was actually a follow-up to our spring of 2020 article, the oil industry, in spite of drastically lower wind and solar prices, has continued and will continue to exist. In fact, the massive downturn in the oil industry in 2015, combined with the Russian and Saudi Arabian fighting that drove the price of crude oil to sometimes below zero in 2020, has actually strengthened the industry. You might think that's an odd statement, but what's happened is the high cost players have been forced out of the industry. This means that opportunists and lesser skilled companies that needed 80, 90, or in some cases, even $100 a barrel to survive, well, they're now gone. However, their production has not, and that's the key. We'd like to interject for just 10 seconds to ask you to click like if this is the kind of thing that you like. It really helps us with the Google algorithm. And if you're interested in electric vehicles, the energy industry, high technology, things like that, please click subscribe because that's the kind of thing we talk about. Thanks, back to the show. What happened is those companies built an infrastructure. And by infrastructure, we mean they drilled wells, they installed pipes, they invested billions of dollars, sometimes into high cost oil sands operations. And those systems were transferred to more efficient companies at pennies on the dollar, thereby lowering their cost. This was done through standard mergers and acquisitions, and in some cases, the actual bankruptcy process. As an example of this, in September of 2020, Suncor, which is a major oil sands producer, indicated that they are producing oil now at $27 per barrel. Today, the price of oil is $50 per barrel, ranging upwards to $60 per barrel. And their guidance for 2021 shows their marginal cost will drop to about $24 per barrel in US dollars. Listen to this analyst explain the current situation. You know, as you get into uh, $60 US oil, um, uh, Western Canada select around $50 a barrel. I mean, the free cash flow that these companies can generate is absolutely, it's, it's tremendous. And I think that's uh, what the market's kind of considering right now, that uh, these prices are not a flash in the pan. It looks like OPEC Plus will want to continue to be show some restraint on the, uh, on the production side. And the policies in the U.S. are not supportive for domestic production out of the U.S., both of gas and, and of oil as well. So, you know, it's, it's going to be a tight environment for oil for most of the year, and that'll help sustain prices, uh, you know, I guess uh, higher for longer, as it were. Probably in the $60, $70 range, I don't see them going above that. But that, that represents great gobs of cash flow for these companies. I mean, in the case of Suncor, I think at these prices, they generate about $500 million per quarter in free cash flow, which uh, they'll probably allocate to either higher dividends or buyback shares, and shareholder friendly initiatives and things of that nature. So that, that's what the market is, uh, is kind of looking at right now. It is important to note that while painful to the inside players in the oil industry, most of the pain is actually felt by the investors. And that's where most of the money was lost as it was initially collected from the public markets. It's counterintuitive to those who don't work in the industry that extreme hardships end up strengthening these companies that survive. Oil and gas is unlike typical manufacturing, which goes away as factories close due to demand shocks. The demand for oil and gas products, while still strong, will increase globally over the next decade or so and only start to decline in the 2030s. China, India, and other countries with hungry, growing middle classes want the comforts you and I have. They want a car or two. They want home heating. They want paved roads. They want consumer goods delivered by big rig trucks. Today, all of those things involve vast amounts of oil and gas. Most oil and gas spending goes into what are categorized as sunk costs. The companies that constructed the systems that we just talked about may come and go but the actual production stays, it just changes ownership. The wells that were drilled and the oil sands investments that were made and the pipelines that were built do not become abandoned during downturns. Their ownership is simply transferred. There are several notable exceptions to the sunk cost logic. While pipelines are a sunk cost, they are attractive to investors and should be attractive to society in general because Unlike pump jacks and SAG D extraction systems, 
Pipelines can be used to transport different materials. Pipelines should be thought of as highways that can carry dozens of different types of materials and are frequently reversed to push products in the opposite direction to what they were originally designed. Today, oil may flow south. Five years from now, hydrogen may flow north. Fifteen years from now, fresh water may flow south again. And the second exception to the sunk cost logic is that there are producers with high marginal costs, most notably fracking. Oil and gas producers that rely on variable costs to get their product out, like fracking, are not attractive M&A targets. And so their production can stay offline during even a prolonged period of oil price recovery. Listen to what this analyst says about the Permian which is the basin in North Texas and Southern Oklahoma. That was the basis of the oil frenzy for the last decade. I did read some commentary today suggesting that uh, some people think a significant portion, and I'm gonna say significant in this case is 10% of the shale capacity on the oil side of the states may not come back for a long period of time. Now, if that was true, that would play a major role uh, in energy prices here in North America. Uh, I still think that the Saudis has the world where they want the world. I don't think the Saudis want oil to be lower or higher. And when you think about Iran, Iran is probably going to continue to pay hardball until June because they have a presidential election in June and the government is not going to appear weak before that period in June. So, The bottom line is that the International Energy Association, the IEA, Bloomberg and so many other reliable sources of energy predictions appear to be correct. Oil and gas will die a very slow death and go out with a whimper near 2100 and is definitely not going out with a bang in the 2030s. To ask you to click like if this is the kind of thing that you like. It really helps us with the Google algorithm. And if you're interested in electric vehicles, the energy industry, high technology, things like that, please click subscribe because that's the kind of thing we talk about. Thanks.